Uh, okay. We kind of have a Shirley Temple on the phone. <laughs> she, she's, you know, she's an ingenue and, and, and cute as hell, in, in my opinion, and, and great actress and uh, will someday uh, save a studio like Shirley Temple did Fox. Right. I think she almost has and, and has now. Yeah. Our guest is standing by. She's raring to go. Not that they were in trouble. No. Just, no. she's doing good. This movie's getting great reviews. So. Yes. So, uh, Lynn Shea is ready for us to call. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and give her a call. Hello? Hi, is this Lynn? It is. All right. Well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so excited to welcome a returning cult radio guest, She is an actress who you know and love and has been donned kind of the new grandmother of horror films. She's joining us to talk about the new release, Room for Rent. The godmother, godmother. The godmother. Uh, The new release, Room for Rent, the one and only Miss Lynn Shea. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I'm having a very good time right now, so it's a great time to speak. I was telling Tiffany, Tiffany came down and she was like, Lynn is just full of life right now, and she's happy and jumping up and down and all excited. And I'm like thinking, Lynn, can you tell me the secret? I guess the secret is to have a hit movie. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or let, let's say that's a, that's a component. I am so... I, 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 it's hard to describe because this had such a sort of small beginning in terms of, you know, very small budget, um, very small production values, although very good people... And, you know, you never know. I mean, period. You just never know. You never know on a big production if it's going to be successful or how people will receive it. But I feel so gratified because the elements that have made this movie seem to be a success. I've never seen reviews like this. I mean, for anything. (laughs) I mean, it's just crazy. People are also really picking up on what this movie is about which is very exciting to me um, because Tommy Stovall the director and I worked very hard on what what is the big idea of what this woman is you Mm -hmm. know she's not just a uh, there's a lot of crazy killer movies and that has not that's not what I wanted to make at all or what I was interested in so long story short that is definitely part of my joy feeling that I succeeded in um, the ideas that I was hoping to uh, to present in this film. I mean, it had to be something that, that gave you deep thought when they offered this to you because it's very controversial in a lot of ways and, and the reason it's so good and the reason that it works is because and, and you were the one that did to do the job and you did to make people feel sorry for you because it touches on loneliness and it, it touches right. on that kind of a situation. And knowing that you've pretty much been a character actress all your life, and now, of course, you're getting to be this, this big star, and you're, you're carrying movies. Uh, what was, it, was it scary for you when they offered you? Because this was a big piece of meat on your plate here. Um, no, it wasn't at all. I, I guess uh, my background is very rich. I came out of theater in New York. I lived in New York. I never even thought about doing film. I mean, really... I really, really love what acting is about, the process uh, of acting, and the uh, opportunity it offers for you to really talk about truth about things. I'm, I'm not a frivolous, you know, I never thought about being a movie star, or a, I, I just never did. I love the process of, of, of character work. And um, this character in particular, Tommy, I've worked with twice before on a little movie called Hate Crime. Okay. And I say little because, you know, he lives in Sedona. He's kind of off the grid in terms of the Hollywood scene and all that stuff. He lives a very lovely life. Uh, he and his partner have been together for many years. And um, he's a very calm, intellectually interesting uh, person who... I don't know other than having made films with him. Right. It's not like we stay in touch and we party together. You know, there's nothing mm-hmm. having to do with that. So when he came to me, he, he sent the script to me, and I think he found the script online. I mean, he's one of the. He's also Tommy's a very quietly 
aggressive guy. <laughs> you, know, you, you, don't, you, you don't feel that about him, but he's very proactive about his own life. And um, as I as I think we all need to be, and you have to remind yourself some of the time, you, if you don't do it, it doesn't happen. Right. Right. And so anyway, he found this story, and um, he sent it to me. It was a couple of years ago now, and I was in the middle of shooting another film, and I didn't like it. And I... I, and so I passed. I said, I'm, I'm really, this just doesn't, it doesn't strike me. Any, I, can't, I, I don't have a feel for it. And about a year or so later, he sent it to me again. And I reread it. And, you know, it's also, you see things depending on where you are at. Right. <laughs> you know, you could see right. the same picture t- yesterday and then see it again today and you see two different pictures. Mm-hmm. Right, because right. Of, you yeah. know, where, where, where you are living. So... I read it again, and I thought, gee, it's not so bad. I don't know what I didn't like about it, but what I still did not like about it is it was kind of about this psychotic killer. <laughs> and, and you know, the, it starts off right away, the woman, you know, she's murdered her husband, and the police come, and it's, and, and I thought, you know what, they've made that movie so many times. And <laughs> I started, <laughs> I, so I started churning on the idea of who is this woman, and maybe she didn't kill her husband. Maybe he really died. And maybe, and I'm, I mean, I'm really like sort of um, gathering steam on my own imagination here. And I, I thought, what if, and literally it happened like that. I thought, what if she is one of these women who is disenfranchised and whose husband doesn't really allow her to, to, to have much of a life except to be his, really kind of his slave mm-hmm. and who never wanted children and there's no love in their life. And the the scary thing is the really scary thing is there are a lot of people who live like that. Yeah. And and uh, and they're and they're under the radar. You know, they're in the shadows because they they live and they die like that. I mean, and I um so I thought there's an interesting story there to watch this woman who has no idea how to navigate life by herself because she never had to. You know, she was quote taken care of but with no love. We find out with abuse we find out with uh, philandering. We find out, you know, that this guy was that he, you know, looked at. I mean, that first scene where she's putting the porno magazines in the, <laughs> right. in the drawer. It, it, there's, there's your first inclination, and the way I, I threw the the wedding band in with it. That was this was. I, I'm very proud. Those are my ideas. I really like that. But um, but that that was interesting to me. And Tommy is a fantastic listener. Um, he's a much better listener than I am, mm-hmm. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I get on a train, and you can't get me off. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I go, oh, wait, maybe I better get off at that stop again. <laughs> what somebody else wants. Um, I'm a little bit selfish in that way, and I, I admit that because I, I, get, I get really you know, hung up on my, on my own desires. Oh, why but, not? Um, but Tommy um, is a fantastic listener. And we talked about this, and the more we discussed it, the more we, we thought we really had something here. The next part was the evolution of her character. I feel like this movie's a real page-turner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it's short. The movie is a short film. It moves slowly, but it moves consistently in a direction. And every scene is sort of a, something new is happening. And I love that about the film. It's like reading a novel. I feel like. Well, one of the things and, that um, one of the things that we were really impressed with with your performance, Lynn, is I don't want to give too much away, yeah. but but there's a scene uh, where there's a group of of adolescent kids who are kind of trying to trap you and are threatening to like you know rape and all these other kinds of things. And you turn it around on them, but the fact that you showed, A, at first, that vulnerability, and then immediately was like, no, I'm not going to take this, and you turn it around on them. Like, that was incredible. I have to tell you, that was a very, that was a very scary scene to shoot. And, I, and even at this moment, it, it's interesting as an actor that basically what we're doing is pretending. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's really what acting is. I mean, in a nutshell, with all the fancy things that you have to do to, to learn to be an actor, it's basically pretending you're somebody else. Right. And something happened when we were shooting that scene that your body does not know you're pretending. Mm. And th- there's something about that that y- you can work yourself up into a, 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 you know, we all have that ability to work ourselves up into some kind of a frenzy, which then will create an emotion. 
And um, one of my favorite teachers is Mark Rydell, who I worked with at the actor studio. And we had this, this one conversation about this where he said, you want to make yourself angry and really, really make yourself angry and upset? He said, really, really try to open a door the wrong way mm-hmm. and just and keep at it. And it's crazy. Your body, you start to sweat. You start to hyperventilate. Your your blood vessels start, you know, starting enlarging, and um, and so there was a, a point in that scene where physically something happened to me, and I was both in. It was weird because I, it's that moment where you go, don't break out of the scene, you know, don't leave the scene. There's an awareness of what's happening, and it also um, a sort of unconscious thing which does happen. Mm-hmm. And that scene contains that for me. And I, even when I watch mm-hmm. it, I, I'm, I'm, I cringe. I'm holding on to myself. I mean, we had a little premiere last night. It's really weird. It makes me cry. It you, makes you know, me the, cry. The whole thing you're talking about, the process, I, I've seen that uh, with, with actresses on sets to where they will walk away from everybody else and stand in the corner right. and right. upset themselves and everything. But what I want to find out is, is the young people that you worked with in that scene, uh, which were very good at portraying adolescent yep. hoods, uh, did you talk to them about the scene? Did you have any interaction? Did you totally deliberately stay away from them? How did that go? And then there was one little surprise thing in there where when you turn the corner, and I'm really not trying to tell too much, but when you kind of just kissed him, right? And, and like, was that a surprise to him? Was that an ad lib? It's kind of two questions. That was. That was in the script, okay. and I got to tell you, that was the one thing that made me want to do the film. Yeah, because it was such an uh, it was such an outrageous move for this woman to make. So that was scripted. But what was not scripted was because um, it's uh, let's see. It says she kisses him, and he. It says he she slap she slap. Okay, I, I can't remember if he slaps me or I slap him. But in the script, it was only one of us, and I said she slaps him back. Mm. Um, and the also when he there's a you know you you do sort of what they call a stage slap. I mean mm-hmm. you're, you're supposed to you, it, where you you kind of work out the timing of it so that the actor who's being hit really sells the the hit. So you're the one that throws your head. And, and the the punch really doesn't touch you, supposedly. Well, in that scene, <laughs> in that take, he hit me. Oh. <laughs> I, it, was, oh. it was my own fault. Maybe that's why I got so upset. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it had nothing to do with anything emotional. It was like, you MFR. <laughs> <laughs> but... You know, now I'm, I'm, look, I'm revealing something to myself about myself right now. Wow. <laughs> um, but anyway, but it, it, and it was and actually, it's a great take, and it was interesting because it was a very the reaction was very it was just ow. I think it was just like that. Wow. And um, so we did not we did work on the slap, which we had most of the time got it right, except that one time. But um, so we did discuss the scene. Of course, we did. But the place it went to was not discussed. Right. Mm-hmm. And I don't even think I could have discussed it because I didn't know where it was going to go. Now, I, I wish I had so, like outtakes. Like, So he smacks you in the face. <laughs> what does he say right. when the director goes, cut? I mean, I'm sorry? What? <laughs> it, it, I mean, kind of. You know, I mean, you're, it, it's, acting is fabulous. I mean, because you're both, <laughs> You're both in reality and out of reality at the same time. Yeah, yeah he would say, was that, he actually would, Ryan would say, and he's a wonderful guy, a really terrific young actor, too. And, and he said, you know, he'd say, are you okay, or did, you, did I hurt you? And it's usually, no, I'm fine, you know, whatever. And I remember after that take, he said, are you okay? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> you know, this was, and this was after the whole scene, you know. Right, right. And I said, I'm fine. You know, I said, I'm okay. But um, it, we, and we did that, the slap several times wow. and most of the time he he missed me you know and it was just like i had a reaction and then i went for him but this time i had a my reaction was obviously a little it was stronger because he really hit me now you can really get hurt doing and that they, stuff man I, you know you have to be careful it was have you been hurt in films you before be yeah i want actually on stage i almost got my jaw broken once by a guy and that was horrible and it was the same thing he he got very violent with me on uh, this was in new york um the Manhattan Theater Club. Mm-hmm. I, I'll, I'll never forget it. 
Um, and uh, he didn't mean to hurt me. I mean, it wasn't. But he, you have to stay in control as right. an actor. Everybody thinks, I'm really a good actor if I can get out of control. Well, that's wrong. You're not a good actor if you're out of control. You're a good actor if you're in control, allowing things to happen. Uh, Tiffany's over here good. laughing because she, she did a small part in a movie one time, and she had to crash into other high school students in the hallway. And I don't know if you had a, if she had a bad stunt guy or what, but she came home all bruised up. So, you know, we, we definitely can feel your pain. I mean, you know. Right, but, no. It really doesn't you make really good sense. I mean, you can really get an insidious. Um, the first one where Patrick Wilson strangles me, mm-hmm. and he's a skilled theater actor. I sure. mean, he's you know Patrick is extraordinary. But in the heat of the moment, I was all black and blue around my neck. He wow. didn't. He didn't choke me because there's a way. There's a. He was pressing down on my neck rather than squeezing. I mean, that's and it looks like he's squeezing because. He sells that, you know what they mm-hmm. call it. That's what they say in the trade. And um, but but even him selling it in the heat of the moment, you know, the energy in his hands left me. I had like um, fingerprints all over my right. neck that were, you know, a little bit. But he, but I was fine, and he didn't hurt me. But you know, it's really um, it, that's part of the skill of you know, it, it's a skill, a learned skill, to be able to do that properly. Right. Now, uh, we were talking about just, I want to let listeners know uh, that as far as Room for Rent, uh, it is has opened in uh, select theaters as of May 3rd, so that's yesterday, and it's going to hit right. digital on May 7th, so no matter where you are in the world, you'll be able to get it as of May 7th. Um, what was the reaction? I know you guys had your, your pr- little premiere last night. What is was right. the reaction in the theater? Because, like we talked about and alluded to earlier, it's been nothing but positive reviews. Right, unbelievable. The reaction in the theater is discomfort. Hmm. Um, uh, and and the word people keep using. We just did a little Skype with a class tonight, which was great. I didn't know that's what it was, but the, this uh, class in Virginia showed the film, and then we did a Skype Q and A with the with the with the students. Wow, I like that. And um, it was great. I'd actually like to do more of that because it's fun to be able to to talk to young actors or people you know that are interested in the business, and you know it's fun to be able to give insight. Mm-hmm. But they kept using people keep using the word creepy. There's something very creepy about the things that Joyce does, um, which are out of uh, desire, um, and it's uncomfortable, but tr- but real. And um, some of the choices I made, I think, um, sort of lend to that, you know, to that uh, experience. And um, that's great because that's also a sales pitch for the film. People want—I don't know why, but they do. People want to see creepy. Well, mm-hmm. you're going to see creepy if you see this movie. Right. <laughs> Well, definitely creepy as far as the parts where you kill people and, and so forth. But I must say, it's all according to who you are and how you look at the film and your age and everything. You know, it, it, there are scenes where you romantically fantasize over your renter, and he's a, a young, uh, attractive, good looking, you know, macho kind of dude. And you get into some intimate situations with him. And I know personally myself, I'm around your age, and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Us, us <laughs> older people, we can still. <laughs> that's, that's actually, I, I love that scene, actually. I think it's very, very bizarre, and um, I won't, we won't talk about it too much because <laughs> I think people will look at it when they see it. Right. Yeah. But for her, it wasn't, it was, you know, she had, her life was a fantasy life. And then to be able, it's like people that have dolls, you know, that, and there are people that have dolls that become their partners. Yeah. Right. You know, we all know that's a real thing because they can then manipulate them and do with them what they want to have done and what they want to do. And I don't just mean sexually. I, I mean, as, as friends, right. these people have, people are, you know, we're a, we're a pretty weird animal. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, we don't really, people don't really discuss that kind of thing you know i mean there's stuff on television about taboos and this. i mean we're all loaded with taboos i mean i don't want anybody to know all the things i do all by myself <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, well, I, well yeah and i wanted to ask you because we had kind of talked about this a little bit before the interview 
Um, I want to ask you how you feel or if you feel like you've been typecast in any sense of the word because we were talking about the likeness between um, you and actress Betsy Palmer because we were talking about how they obviously had cast Betsy Palmer to be to play the mom in the uh, the first Jason movie and I was like I don't understand right. I guess it's like the shock value because you have this woman who is very sweet and you know very unassuming and then they cast her to play like a crazy serial killer um, and that ha- tends to happen with your characters a lot too in different films either a killer or there's some kind of twist or zaniness or whatever when I know you in, in person Lynn you're a very sweet a very nice person you're pro animal rights what do you think about the fact that you tend to get cast in those zany crazy and sometimes homicidal roles all the time I, you know, I don't even think about it because what I think about is story and character. I mean, that's it. That's all I, I, I look at. I don't look at I don't look at genre at all. Mm-hmm. I really don't. I know genre obviously exists in a big way, and that if people want to pigeonhole or categorize what I've done in that way, that's fine. You know, I mean, I have no. That's the way they're seeing it, and I'm good with that. I don't feel typecast at all. I'm I, there's something coming up that I'm going to do which I can't talk about because I can't wait till I can talk about it but <laughs> um there's a whole different group of people a whole different kind of character um I don't feel I play uh, one thing I I like is that I've never been pigeonholed as like an old lady I mean people might call me an old lady but I'm not I I'm I'm I I defy that mm-hmm. that terminology I hate it I think it's I think it's can I say a bad word? Uh, yes. You can say any bad word you want, yes. I think it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> okay? You can yeah. write it down. It's bullshit. Because, and I, I grew up that my mom and dad, I mean, I'm very fortunate. Age was never discussed in my house. Mm-hmm. What was discussed is how you live your life. Right. You know, and I think it's bullshit, have, too. Yes, go ahead. Well, <laughs> but I have no, I honestly have no concept of my own quote chronological age it doesn't matter to me and the roles i've been doing pretty much don't have anything to do with that right you know they have i mean listen i'm obviously not going to play a 30 year old or a four you know i mean i'm but but it's that's not the that's not the important element in the story i tell right so you can call me whatever you... I couldn't care less. Believe me. I love my life so much. I'm having such a good time. I hope I live till I'm 110 and I'm still acting and drop dead on There, set. there okay. you go. Except for the drop <laughs> dead part. Write that down. But, you, the, write that. The, you know, the whole psychological aspect of, of Room for Rent, what I meant, what I said, it's all according to who you are and, and how you look at it. You were just talking about how, you know, they envisioned you as being older, you know, grandmother or whatever. Right, and, and that's then, fine. And, and, I mean, I am older. But but the thing but, but, but the thing is 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 one of the the things that may make people uncomfortable and the creepy to some oh, people aspect of the film is is the fact of you having this big crush on a, a much younger guy. But why does that necessarily have to be creepy or wrong? You know, right? And I mean, I think Joyce doesn't even. That's not the issue either. I think she's just she wants. Look, this is a woman that lives through romance novels. Yeah, right. You know, she wants to, she wants to be with somebody. In her mind, she's a, she's a young woman. In her mind, she wears lilies in her hair and dress. You know, when she finally owns that part of her life, she. Um, so, for her, it's not. A, it has, I don't. Uh, if the guy had been, had been old, you know, had been her age, it wouldn't have mattered to her. Right. She wanted. She wanted someone to love in her life, yeah. and this was the guy that came along. And so, hey, he was you know handsome and and but she wanted someone. And I and, and honestly, if it had been a, a, an attractive, interesting older man, that wouldn't have made any difference for her. At least that's the way I think is the character. And there was also um, a very however, maternal, not necessarily maternal, but she wanted. There was another yeah. instinct that came through that like she wanted to take care of somebody too. Totally. Totally. Thank you for that's exactly that's a, a very good point. Yes. And she even says to him at one point, you know, I, I forgive me if I act like your mother. I mean, which was different than what she had been doing. She was trying anything to keep him. Mm-hmm. Anything, anything to keep him. 
Well, coming from the point of being a lonely person, it really hit me hard. <laughs> I thought it was a deeply moving movie, and I, I just absolutely loved it. I, I think it's great that at the premiere last night, you had uh, somebody you worked with with Insidious, James Wan, showed up, right? Yeah, he did. Oh, I was so it made me feel really happy. Yeah. Now I have to He's ask. Been a- I have to ask you, Lynn, because we have you know our listeners asking us and prompting us to ask you. Is there any word about another Insidious? I know you guys have done four. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. There, there you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, we won't pry. I know I mean, you can't say much past that. <laughs> let, let me ask you this, though, because no. this is a, a really good question that I really want to know, because I was making a joke earlier, and I was referring to you like Charlie Rich, the country singer, in the fact that he had worked for a long time, and he never really achieved great success until he was like 60 65 years old now you've been in films forever and and your brother with new line cinema and everything and you've done a lot of supporting roles but as of lately in in in, you know at the age you are now like i said you're like the same age as me you're getting these big big roles and you're heading a film what do you attribute having worked all those years to where you've gotten this newfound fame if you will at, at your age, uh, I think luck and talent. There you go, and it <laughs> takes talent too. I really mean. I mean, I really mean that. I, I, I really think I have. I, I think I have a, a bit of a gift as a, as a. Um, I don't know. Acting is so is so peculiar because it's sort of like a, a stepping into somebody else. And I, I even going back when I was little, little. I mean, people say, "When did you decide to be an actress?" I never decided to be an actress yeah. mm-hmm. until I was twenty-four, and was the registrar of the, at the. I was the registrar of the San Francisco Museum of Art. I was an art history major. I always was in school plays. I loved theater. I loved being in plays. I loved making up stories. I loved pretending to be somebody else. And literally, I. But I did was not a theater major in college or anything. And then when I when I was Doing when I finally got a, a real little job in, in the registrar's office, also in at the Metropolitan Museum in New York, and I was unco- I kept going. When do I get to be in a play? And I went, I don't know when. And so I went back to school to, to Columbia in, in theater arts and started, and then decided I wanted to be an actress. Mm-hmm. But it's it's I it, it, I love. I never had a vision for myself ever. It's always about. It was like, is there an open call? Can I go? How do I get there? What what's, what bus do I take? Right. Um, how long do I have to wait? What's going to happen? Is there another one tomorrow? I'm going. Um, can I uh, send my picture and resume? To- I mean, I was just like an idiot, dogged, at, 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 uh, obsessed. I found a notebook. I didn't even realize I had kept it. I have you know stuff from what, years and years ago that I still have in a box somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it was pages of notes and letters I wrote to casting directors and to directors and to somebody I wanted to be, who can do, is there anything in your movie, for, is there anything in your play for me? It was never movies. And I, I mean, I was very always extremely proactive to get what I needed, which was to act. Mm-hmm. But I never thought, oh, I hope I can get to Hollywood. Right. That was never on my agenda. So I attribute really where I'm at to hard work right. and desire to do what I love. And you, you have know, you ever have you ever considered uh, teaching acting? And the reason I ask is because you are so dedicated to your craft. You do have so much talent. I can tell you, Lynn, that you are one of uh, maybe a handful of actors that Terry and I feel like it doesn't matter if you're in the movie for three minutes. We will watch it because right. you are in it. Um, and you have such tenacity when you're on the screen. No, no role is too small. Have you ever considered teaching? And because that's very important to let new actors know that it doesn't matter if you're on the screen for sixty seconds or not. Make it big. No, I've never considered it, <laughs> and I don't want to. <laughs> I, I, because what I do is a little bit secret. I'm happy to give people support. Mm-hmm. And uh, will answer questions, and um, I can tell them the. the I worked with uh, my teachers. I, I studied hard. I worked with Uta Hagen. I worked with Stella Adler and Lee Strasberg. Those were my three teachers. I mean, I'm I am. If you want to call the real deal, I mean, I really know. I I, I am a conglomerate of those three people who have taught me how to break down a script, to understand story, to find the truth in myself. 
I don't, I, I'm grateful my emotion, my emotional life is very surface. I'm mm -hmm. a wreck all the time. <laughs> if so. you didn't have such a thing as a reel, as a resume, as, as a publicist, as a manager, uh, the, the studio people that talk to each other when they, they bring you up for a role, you had to talk to some studio from another country or whatever, or, or somebody that didn't work within the system like that with the things they get sent when they decide who to hire. If you had to right. describe to a casting director or a director what type of actress you are, who you are, what you are, what you do, and why you should be considered for the role, what would you say? Mm. Well, that's a great question. Um, I think I, at this point I would say my work speaks for itself. Yeah. And that I'm a true, am I, I'm a truth teller. Mm -hmm. I will do anything to tell the truth of the character. And I will go places that no one else will go right. <laughs> to get there. I would say so, because one of my listeners' favorite scenes was you as a dominatrix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, how many people have never... Oh, <laughs> are you talking about um, good old-fashioned orgy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God! I got a funny story. I can't tell on the air, though. <laughs> Are you sure we're totally uncensored here? Uh, I don't can. It's too embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we definitely plan on having you back, and maybe we'll save it for next time. But I, I want to say right. uh, about Room for Rent is is in addition to the great story. And it definitely is a thriller. I wouldn't even say it's a horror film. It's a thriller, isn't it? I mean, it's a thriller. It is a thriller. And it's a character study. The way I described it in the little promo we did is I said it's a woman's, um, it, it's the story of a woman's descent into madness. Right. Yes. And it's because this woman is, is trying to figure out, how, she has no tools to navigate life and is trying to find a way through. I mean, that's to me what that character is about. And with all that and, that you um, get, you know, I'm a big person for watching the cinematography and, and the, the set and the lighting right. and everything. It is so beautifully shot. And oh my God, what a beautiful place the Donia, Arizona is. And that house. That house is gorgeous. Yeah. It, well, it is. It was really pretty rickety when we were in it, but we made it look good. The, the DP was great. This guy, Ben, um, oh, I'm blanking on Ben's name. And he's he, he's a, a, a wonderful young DP. He was a uh, who, very quiet guy. Um, very introverted and just a beautiful sense we had the most limited camera department you ever saw <laughs> i think we had two guys helping with setting up lights and i'm talking like a light on a stick with a thing right. <laughs> you know I mean? and you know you can't you cannot see low budget at all wow, i mean it's it is it's really beautifully shot no it's beautiful and that's because this guy, ben, uh, he's really, a, an ex please find out his, his full name. I just don't okay. have it on the tip of my sure. tongue. But a one a really talented guy who um, is, again, very serious-minded. He, you know, he, he didn't, there was no frivolity. He, he loved looking through a lens. His comfort zone is through the lens, and that, yeah. that makes a great cinematographer usually. Well, you know, the movie... He sees something no one is that Ben Bram you're talking about? Yes, yes. Yeah. There you go. We got a great research department here. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Thank you. before of course, before we wrap up, I, I also wanted to ask you because this is the first time you've gotten a co producing credit too, right? Right, right. Yeah, it is. Well, see well that that might, that might help answer my na my last question here. But uh, the movie has a, a shock kind of twisty ending, which we will not give away. But we do want to say that in a way it's a little open-ended to where there could possibly be another one. Would you consider doing yeah. another one? Yeah, you would. I thought so, especially with being co-producer. I, totally, yeah, I totally would. I totally would, because I, mostly because of Tommy and because we have a really great um, a really great camaraderie and partnership. I mean, he, Tommy, as I said, is a wonderful listener, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wonderful talker. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know, wonderful, but I do it a lot. And he's very receptive. Yes, um, yes. But I, you know, I, who does know? But I think, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I love the storyline, and mostly, I'm, I'm really, I, I've never co-produced before, and the reason they gave, they actually gave me that credit because I was so involved in, um, in, in honing and. Um, figuring out story and dialogue, we, I, I, a lot of the stuff is mine, and um, 
I'm very proud of that, and it gives me a lot of self-confidence, too. Um, uh, there's another film I'm going to be shooting in upstate New York um, in June that I'm also co-producing, um, and I, I've i written a tremendous amount of the dialogue. I mean, I've uh, which I have a very good ear for that. I, I don't ever want to write a script, I don't think, mm-hmm. because I can't. It's too exhausting. Mm-hmm. I mean, it you know you write and you rewrite and you write and you rewrite. It's just too it's too much for me. But what I'm good at, I've discovered, is detail of the way someone talks and how a phrase, you know, how how a phrase should should be spoken. Lee Winnell is a genius at that, by the right. way, who wrote the Insidious films. He's actually so funny. I told him he writes in Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Because he, because his his cadences and it's like poetry. Right. And when I learn, I got to say, Lee's one of the few writers I learn it word for word. I don't paraphrase his his thoughts. The thoughts are written so beautifully and with like an alliterative feel to it. Kind of po- it's kind of poetry, really. Right. Sure. And and he's funny. He said he he agreed. He said yeah. He said because uh, once he got mad at me because I kept kept saying dark instead of night. <laughs> and he says, it's not dark, it's night. It's not night, it's dark. And dark and night are two different things. He says, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I apologize, Lee, I apologize. But, um, but picking the right word um, is very important. And I was, you know, we did change a lot of, this, of the dialogue um, to make it fit the character. Yeah. And... Um, so I don't, you know, I, co-producing, as long as it's the creative side, I hate, the little bit I ended up getting involved in in this other movie, I hated it. It right. becomes backbiting with agents and yeah. money, and I'm not interested. I'm totally not interested. So is there okay, anything... Uh, go ahead. Well, you go ahead. What I was just going to say, gonna say uh, you were talking about uh, something that you're co-producing on now that you mentioned... Uh, earlier, there was another project that you can't talk about, so I don't know what you can say. You can say, is there anything right. that's coming up that you can kind of give us an idea, plot, or title? Well, I can tell you, Grudge, the Grudge is going to be released in January, and that's going to be extraordinary. Mm. Um, we did a, a reboot. Um, they're calling it a reboot. The director, Nicholas Pesh, is a force to be reckoned with. That's He's really, I told him he's like the Salvador Dali and Magritte of filmmaking. Mm-hmm. He's the most, he's got the strangest, it, like the scene, he's a jo- He's the sweetest guy on the planet. And he's quite young, he's like 28 or 29, I think. And um, he just has a way of juxtaposing imagery. Mm-hmm. He did a movie called The Eyes of My Mother, mm. um, which was on Netflix for quite a while. And it's not a new story in many respects, but the way he has put his imagery together was one of the scariest movies I ever saw. Wow. And um, The Grudge is going to be, I, I have a fantastic role in it also. I'm really excited about it. Well, I'm glad there's, a, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of murmuring online about Get Gone, too. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a great story, actually, too. Um, Go ahead. Um, Michael, Michael Thomas Daniel, who uh, is the writer, is actually a, a hiker that lives in Oregon, and a, like a professional hiker. These guys have hiked 6,000 miles. They've done the Pacific, that Pacific Trail or whatever it's called. I mean, it's, it, it's a sort of a, um, a cult of people. Um, and I don't mean that in a, a bad way. I mean, they're, well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> 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 but I, I don't think so. Um, but he... He's one of these guys who just he just keeps going, you know. Mm-hmm. He, and he wrote a script that a friend of mine, Mark David, who is a wonderful cinematographer, you know, I've done a couple projects with. Um, I guess Mark got hired to, to as the DP, and he said, "There's a role in this. You should, it's a really great role. We're going to be up in um, Cascade Falls, Oregon, which is really beautiful, and it's going to be beautiful up there." So I thought, sure, I'll take a look at it. I mean, it, these, none of them are any money. I mean, these are all small, you know, small projects. Mm-hmm. But that's never been a motive. It, it can be a motivating force, <laughs> but not on these projects. Right. So, um, uh, and I really liked the story. I thought it was a really interesting story, a little horror film. Um, I loved the character. And it, the character was very well written, actually. 
and um, she had this one monologue, which is what made me want to do the to work with this guy. So the only problem was they have never made a movie before, mm. and um, without putting anything negative on on uh, Michael or any of the people, they didn't know anything about what they were doing. Right. I mean, there was no call sheet. There was no. I, I need. I'm very particular when I work. I want to know ahead of time well, what yeah. days am I working. What what scenes come up first it's really important to me because that's how i formulate the character because you know you have to build on what you've done if a, if you're shooting late scenes first you have to then support what you put into the can with the scenes you're going to shoot after i mean it's a little bit complicated right. right i never knew what we were doing i didn't know what time they were coming it was literally um mark and his girlfriend who was lovely this woman um Lorna Larkin is her name, and she's an actress and a, a lovely, a lovely young Irish girl. And they were my linchpins. I mean, if it wasn't for Lorna, I don't know if I would have, I could have made it. Um, so it was a very stressful shoot because it was so disorganized. But I saw uh, that he got he he edited. It, you know, he does everything himself. He doesn't want any help from anybody. In some respect, he did get. I don't know. He's got a couple editors' names on it, and kind of shot he went to AF, afm with the badge mm-hmm. and shopped around <laughs> and he got it sold he sold the film oh. to a pretty big um um i think it's called phoenix mm-hmm. phoenix international it's an english company and they're taking it to can and uh, the guy made it got the movie made wow, wow. well you know, it could it. be worse we we knew a bunch of actors that, that was on the show and we got involved with and, and they uh, traveled on their own expense to another state to do a film, and there wasn't no movie there. Right. Yeah, I mean, that right. stuff right. happens as part of the deal. But, totally. And the thing is, um, I love my performance. I mean, I really, I love the character. It came out exactly in a way like I was hoping. And again, um, one thing about Michael is he was very open to my changes and things I wanted to try and do. And... Um, I was very inspired by the character, right. cr- strangely enough. So it was. A, it ended up being a really positive experience as an actress. It was a very frustrating experience as an actress. <laughs> well, you know, I'm glad you're around because there's not, you know, you don't do just horror, okay? But you're known a lot for horror. I mean, let's just face it. And there, there's not a lot of women that do what you do now. I mean, back in the day, there used to be, you know, your different ones. And not even just screen queens, but I mean actresses that were known for Barbara Steele or something like that. But but there's not a lot of women now, and you're probably the, the reigning queen of horror, if you will, along with other genres, of course. I'm, I'm just happy to be working, and people want to work with me. It means a, really a lot. I think the fact that I've, I've paved a very... Um, sort of sunny road for myself in terms of uh, of my work ethic and in terms of team teamwork. Um, I've gotten much more confidence in my independent thought right. mm-hmm. um, and courage because it, it, it takes courage too sometimes when you think something doesn't fit right. I, I probably would never be as comfortable on network television um, because it's too limited for me in terms of uh, creative input you're not you know you really and it moves too fast i'm like a tea bag i like to really <laughs> soak right, yeah. right. i really <laughs> i love to soak in the material and that's where all my that's where all my creativity is, is stimulated and that's why i want to be an actress so the i'm grateful that the opportunities i've had have allowed me to um to to grow well, you know, your 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 reputation precedes you because not only based on your talent, Lynn, but also your professionalism uh, just Thanks. is is astounding because we've we actually know Adam Rifkin very well and he's been on the Whoa, show a couple God, of times <laughs> and he's like Lynn is a dream. He's like if I could cast her in every movie I ever made, he's like that's all I would do. <laughs> oh, I love the guy. I love him so much as well. I mean, he, he is truly he's a one of what he's one of a kind, period. There's nobody like Adam. Nobody. Mm-hmm. He's he's made the most beautiful film. Detroit Rock City is still people's favorites and come to me and talk to me about it and and Adam is also a great collaborator and um very um he's tough. 
he's yeah. a tough dude. Yeah. I, when you know, he, he until you get a scene right. I remember. Um, oh my God, what was the name of the, the project? Where I play a homeless woman, and I was in a dumpster, mm. and I remember, and it was a heavy. I mean, I was supposed to pop up out of the dumpster, and those lids are heavy. Oh no, yeah, they're heavy. And, yeah. And I was popping up out of this dumpster, which meant I had to lift it up with my head, <laughs> you know. And Adam, God bless, <laughs> said, let's do it again, Lynn. Let's do it. I mean, I think he wanted to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you sort of grin and bear it because it was, you know, finally we got it right or the way he wanted it or whatever. The timing it was about a timing thing, I think. But he's he's ruthless when he wants a shot. He will go until he gets it. I love him to pieces. Well, it's, it's, your, it's your awesome. sparkling it's your sparkling personality that allows you to get through uh, projects and and become more and more uh, established in the business. Because we have talked to so many directors and stuff that have used you, and they all talk about how you you offer your input. And you know, to a lot of directors that would annoy them, but not with you. It's just. There's just something about you, you know. I know you was in something about Mary, but there's something about Liv. <laughs> right. and, and and I must oh, okay. say, I've got to recommend Room for Rent. I'm a big Insidious fan, but I gotta think. I don't know. It's hard, man. I gotta think. There's a part of me that thinks Room for Rent's the best performance you've ever done in your life. That, I've heard that, uh, and people have said that, and and in a way, it's my son even told me that he watched it early on. Um, my son's a musician and. A very, very interesting, wonderful soul, and he, um, he, well, on his mom too, but he cried when he saw when he watched it in a couple places. That's got to be hard. And he yeah. said to me, I, and he said, "Mom, you," he said, "You have never." He, you know, you've got to get people to see your performance in this. He said, "No one, no one knows that you can do this." And I mean, so he was one of my early supporters about expressing. That this really is a yeah, this is a role of a lifetime, and some of the reviews have said that too. Because yeah. um, you know, I had a wonderful role in Insidious. I mean, my God, and those those films have been a joy in every way. What, but even this is even more for me in terms of um, storytelling. Again, that that expression, and I'm so grateful. So yes, I hope everyone will see it and find a way to see it. It's going to be on iTunes and Amazon, and um, we are going to try um, the, the theater that we ran it at here in LA. Um, the this Christian who runs the theater and whose theater it is, he we're setting up a meeting on Thursday. He wants to keep this going with us. Mm -hmm. He loves the movie, and you know it's basically a week run for theatrical, um, right. which makes you eligible for awards and for and reviewers. Wow. But these re these reviews, I'm tell I mean, I can't imagine anybody that wouldn't want to run this sh this film. Right. After there's not one, there's really not one really bad. Re you know, there's this and that someone doesn't care for or that, but in general, they have been glowing yes. in every way about story, about the other actors, about m my performance, about the product. You know, limited but wonderful production values. So I got my fingers crossed, and yes, everybody, go find it. Go find it. Well, well, for me, right. definitely, you touched that special area for me that I only thought that, that somebody or an actor, the likes of Anthony Perkins, because, like, if you look at Norman Bates, it's different than your character, but it's similar in a way that there's layers. I mean, there's the emotion and how they feel and, and, and issues that they're dealing with, and you really touched that in a way that Anthony Perkins did for me, and nobody else done that until uh, you came well, along, and uh, it was incredible. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. What a beautiful compliment. Absolutely. Well, <sighs> again, listeners, the uh, film Room for Rent, it's out in limited release right now, and it's going digital. It'll be available on digital uh, as of May 7th. Uh, Lynn, congratulations on the film. Good luck with all your future work, and thank you again for joining us tonight. Thank you. What a beautiful interview. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Have a great rest of your weekend. And happy Mother's Day. And happy Mother's Day early. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'm glad to be a mom. I, I love my I love 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 being a mom. Yeah. So it's great. Thank you so All right. much. Thank you. Have a great rest of your weekend, Lynn. Thank you. All right. Good bye night. bye.